Who I am and what I love is, is being a fireman here in Boston. There's really nothing other than my family, nothing more I have passion for than that, and it's been completely taken away. July 27th, 2016, I was working in the firehouse that day. Real, real hot day. I just had a lot of, a lot of pain and difficulties just functioning, like breathing, strength. We'd had quite a few fires, East Boston, Salty, a little bit everywhere, which is rare, but it was the second winter fire that day. I just couldn't breathe. I was just gasping for air, and I had this massive pain in my chest. I, I did the best I could to work through it. The, what we traditionally do in this job. Not that that's a good thing, but that's what we do. When the sun hit me in the eyes and I sneezed, and it literally brought me right to the ground in pain. So I went to the hospital, never thought cancer. Maybe I just had a small fall. Maybe I just, just broke a couple of ribs and punctured a lung or something. They did a lot of scans and they found out they had a mass. They just called it a mass, they knew, but. Go back, bunch more testing, pretty good biopsy, ripped me open and come to find out. I had a grapefruit-sized tumor in my chest, between my heart and my lung large B cell, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, which is a blood cancer. They had told him what was found on his chest. They made him very confident with what their plan was, was the right plan. I can't imagine, because I'm, I'm well, to wake up every day and wonder, when am I gonna be better? When am I gonna be able to provide like I used to? When am I gonna be able to just wake up and just be me again? I'm here wearing a uniform in front of my company, but I'm not, I'm still not back to work yet. I'm not at work pretty much two years of the day. People say, are oh, you still the same guy? But you're really not. And all of you out there that have cancer and know someone it is, you know exactly what I mean. I was living in the hospital for weeks. The worst part's been my family having to pick up the slack. I got four kids under the age of 11. I had, they haven't had a dad. Missing my kids' birthdays, missing every, everything. And then when I'm home, I can't leave the house for like 100 days, except for medical appointments. It's been a lot through them, and I just I can't do what I used to. I'm trying to get back. Every two to three weeks, a Boston fireman or a girl is diagnosed with some form of cancer. It's, it's uh, literally become an epidemic, like the commissioner says. I'm lucky I had to live where I live, because I got the Dana Faber pretty much in my backyard. I actually had two rounds of cancer in the last two years. They got the first round, and then a few months later, I found a tumor in the lining of my heart. So I gained one again. And, had a bunch of treatments and then a bone marrow transplant, stem cell transplant. You can't get any better doctors than in Boston, you know, and so they've done a phenomenal job, Dana Farber in particular, with cancer. Um, you don't know anybody's situation. Even the littlest, smallest amount that is given can be the biggest to someone in need. Every donation, everything that was given to us and to my husband has helped us immensely. You don't know until you're affected by it what the Jimmy Fund actually does. I didn't know. I'd see him at Fenway Park, if there were a couple bucks, and that was the end of it. What the Jimmy Fund does is it aids in research. For example, like my transplant, Dr. Jacobson used my own cells, which were extracted from me, put in the fridge somewhere, and put them back into me several months later, rather than a donor, which increased my odds of surviving. And 20 years ago, we didn't have that. The research, a lot of which is greatly in part to the Jimmy Fund, that makes it possible to be able to have people like Dr. Jacobson working on people like me. I want the grace of God fixing people like me.